DNA is what codes for all of the characteristics in every living thing. But what exactly is it? DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. It is a large complex molecule that has the shape of a giant spiral staircase. This shape is called a double helix. How exactly does this long molecule code for anything? DNA is a big chain of molecules that can stand on their own as well as exist in these giant molecular chains. They are organized with a backbone that has slots for different molecules. The other side runs in the opposite direction with molecules corresponding to the other side's molecules. There are four types of molecules that can fit into these slots. Adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. They fit in the slots of the polymerase backbone. In the double helix, adenine and thymine connect, and cytosine and guanine connect. With four molecule options, DNA is coded in base 4, quaternary. The way that DNA actually does things is by making proteins. RNA, a molecule that looks like half of a strand of DNA with one different type of coding molecule, can take the information from the DNA by matching up corresponding code molecules. For it to do so, a little genetic code is written before a desired piece of code and is used as a starting point. This is called the promoter. Also, a code at the end tells it to stop. Then, it brings the information to a part of the cell called the ribosome. There, little molecules carrying amino acids start bonding to the RNA. Each amino acid has a specific three letters of genetic code, or codon, to bond to. As they go along the RNA, the amino acids connect together to form a protein. Once a protein is finished, a codon tells the amino acids to stop and complete the protein. Because there are three digits in a codon, there are 64 possibilities for amino acids. Our bodies only use 20, plus one for the stop codon. This means that many amino acids have multiple possible codons. Amino acids are molecules with a central carbon, a carbon connected to two oxygens to the right, a nitrogen with three hydrogens to the left, a hydrogen above, and many, many, many possibilities below. What makes each amino acid unique is its tail on the bottom. The amino acids connect together using peptide bonds. The unique string of amino acids is what makes the huge amount of possible functions of proteins. Once a protein is made, it goes on to do many things. It can make enzymes, for instance, that cause chemical reactions to happen. That is how DNA codes for traits, by making proteins. Also, not all cells use all of the DNA in their nucleus. That is how we can have hard bone cells and soft skin cells. Within the DNA, there are bits of code that can tell the DNA not to use a certain patch of code for protein production based on the environmental factors. Based on the cells, chemicals, or other conditions around them, a cell can turn off parts of its DNA. A way that this could happen physically is that a gene might make a protein that attaches to another gene that tells the RNA not to use it. A chemical entering the cell might react with this protein and make it stop blocking the second gene. Usually, the chemical has unblocked a gene that is relevant for managing it. There are other ways for this to happen, too. There might be a gene that's usually on and only switched off when a chemical is near. Also, some proteins can speed up and slow down the RNA's work so that there is a very specific amount of protein. In conclusion, DNA makes proteins to carry out the functions of the body. It is also able to tell itself which genes not to use for proteins at a given time. Mm -hmm.